All right, storm clouds gathering. I'm, here's my video response to uh, this video called "What are you calling it here?" Anarcho anarcho capitalism. Why it's broken and how to fix it. Okay, and I haven't yet listened to the whole thing. I'm 12 minutes and 18 seconds in. And th there's a lot in here that n needs to be responded to. Um, and I'd, I'd really like to have a dialogue because all, th all these answers that I can give to this are going to uh, raise, uh, they're going to immediately raise new questions. And I'd really like for you to, to uh, I'd really like to do this in real time because um, I, I, I can't predict exactly what the questions will be. But I, I suspect they'd be good ones. But, but I have this um, problem of not knowing exactly what they're going to be. So, um, all right, let's go immediately to the. And uh, I need. I'm going to have to give a little background in in order to answer it uh, completely. But let's go ahead and and go right to the question of how would something like murder or rape be dealt with in a an anarcho-capitalist society? And uh, when I talk, go ahead and understand that. Um, when I say anarcho-capitalist society, I, when I say a stateless society, when I say a voluntarist society, I mean the same thing, okay? I don't see a distinction between those things, and uh, any distinction I suspect would, will be purely semantic, okay? So uh, somebody has been murdered in a, in a stateless society. Um, now, uh, for the background, what are we talking about? Here, we're not talking about any system, right? Because we're we, anarcho-capitalism doesn't propose any system; it proposes the lack of a system. And uh, our claim is that without um, a state, um, capitalism is just all you're left with. Okay. Now, my contention is that if there's a demand for something, uh, that demand will be met. Okay, I know you uh, uh, you see a, a demand for uh, a security and dispute re resolution as a power vacuum, and it, we'll we'll get to that. But I'm not sure exactly how to respond to that at this point. Um, maybe I'll know a little bit more after I watch the rest of this video. After I listen to the rest of your video, but okay. What I imagine is a society that does have a law. Remember, we agree about the non-aggression principle. We all agree that it's illegal, that it's unlawful to um, initiate force against another person. So let's assume that this society has a law, and that law says um, no person uh, shall initiate force or a credible threat of force against any other person or against the property of any other person. And no person shall become the uh, the owner of any property by stealth or deceit okay there there's the law now we can enforce contracts and we can in, we can justly um, respond to violations of the non-aggression principle um, le let's also assume these uh, dispute resolution organizations something like that exists in this society um, we're not imagining a small remote um, Hamlet uh, with a population of less than a hundred. We're imagining a metropolis. Okay, we're we're uh, okay. Let's ima let's imagine a big city. How about that? Um, something I don't know the size of what the uh, I don't know something maybe five hundred thousand square miles. Um, and uh, five hundred thousand people. Uh, so you have a person for square mile, okay? And and then that part, mo part, a section of that area is uh, densely populated, and there's a good amount of it on the outskirts. You know, it looks like a city, okay? It looks like a city in a county in the United States. Um, 
and we have uh, the, we have that law that the non-aggression principle codified basically that's that was necessary in order to set up this company right or this con- this uh, the society right because nobody believes that that it's possible to, for people to coexist without government so right because we'd all be killing each other and taking advantage of of each other I'm sure we'd all be taking advantage of each other just like we do now but um, we'd be poking each other's eyeballs out right without without some kind of um, written law. So we did that. We wrote the law. We wrote it on stone and set it in the middle of fucking town, okay? And it says you can't uh, initiate force against people or uh, commit fraud. Fair enough. We have all that. We have the dispute resolution or, uh, agency and we have my security company, okay? And this is a, it's not something that is, um, it's not something that stations a a, a a guard at your house or business uh, 24-7. This is something that's pretty cheap that most people can afford. Um, it costs about $100 a year per person uh, that we protect. So if one of our customers has a problem, they basically go through the same process they would go through now with the cops. They would call us. Okay, They'd call us and say, hey, uh, my my friend Bob has been murdered. He's dead. And so I would send out one of my detectives, okay? Um, and, and he would go and he would try to figure out who, who murdered the guy. That's his job. And um, on my payroll is, is some, I don't know, 10 or 20 or 50, some number of um, basically cops, polite cops. who what Their job is not to go around giving traffic tickets or arresting people for um, uh, having drugs on them or anything like that. They don't waste their time with that crap. They just respond to these calls. So they're going to spend a lot of time responding to stuff like domestic, domestic violence, uh, you know, dis- domestic disputes, stuff like that. Uh, but every once in a while we'll have something like this. A murder has been committed. Okay, So um, we send one of our guys out. I'm sorry, I was describing the payroll, right? So we have uh, th- these cops. These They're basically nice cops, too, by the way, right? Because I want s- subscribers. I want customers. I want people to pay me for my service. So that means my service is going to be af- as effective as I could possibly make it be. <coughs> when uh, somebody calls us, we're going to actually try to get results. We're going to try to figure out who wronged them, who stole their, their, their flowers or, or their, their car or who murdered their friend, whatever. Um, we're going to try to figure that out. and We're try, going to try to get them uh, reimbursed for their trouble. We're going to try to get what they lost back to them and some you know extra for all the grief that they've been caused. And we're going to try to extract that from the perpetrator. That's what, that's what we try to do basically. Now, in this case, let's assume that this guy, whoever the murderer is, is not going to cooperate. That's probably a safe assumption. We, we, we could offer him um, – uh, uh, we could send him a letter and say, hey, we believe you may have murdered our customer. Um, uh, will you please uh, pick, pick a dispute resolution agency and, and we'll, uh, we'll get this thing settled? Let's assume that he's not going to respond to that. So um, – what we're going to do is we're going to actually go get him. We're going to pick him up and apprehend him and put him in our custody. And we're going to take him in front of a dispute resolution agency and we're going to try to get a judgment against him. That way, whatever we do to him, we're covered. Nobody can sue us for it. Sue the judge. He made the decision. Okay? Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to try to be reasonably sure that we can get that judgment. Okay, because we don't want to just go around arresting people willy nilly. Um, we would be getting sued all the time. You know, we'd have people uh, taking action against us because we're wronging them by arresting them for no reason. You know, we need to be make sure when we arrest somebody, it's the right person. So we do our detective work first. We we we're fairly confident now that Jeff has murdered Bob. Okay, um, so we. Uh, track Jeff down and we just we take him into custody okay and that's it that's how we, that's how we deal with it okay and what happens to him well let's assume everything goes well and and we get the judgment we go and we we take we take him to uh, let's assume he just doesn't cooperate all the way through right but 
we we think we're right and and it turns out we are right right we 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 he doesn't agree to an arbiter but we're sure that he's murdered somebody so we go to an arbiter and we we say we got this guy here he's murdered somebody and he won't agree to the to a decision uh, we're going to do it for him we're going to use force we're going to force him to submit to the to to the uh decision of that arbiter since he won't choose one, you know he's not cooperating with anything. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna force the issue. Okay. Now, what have we initiated force against him? No, because he initiated first force when he murdered Bob. Okay, we're reacting to his initiation of force. We're not in violation of the law here. He is. Now, I'm sure there'll be situations where we do, in fact, violate the law, and and when that happens, we have to pay. You know, if 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 we go and we arrest somebody, we don't do the proper detective work, or we make a mistake or something, and we we go pick somebody up, and then it it turns out that the uh, the uh, uh, dispute resolution organization says no, no, he he didn't do that thing, he didn't kill Bob, um, he he, uh, he he's fine. Well, now what's he going to do? He's going to say. They have caused me all this trouble. They kept me uh, arrested. I was like detained for a week. I missed work. Hell, I was fired. They owe me a million dollars, a billion dollars, whatever it is. Who knows? Who cares? It, that the specifics are not important, right? But the, the, basically, what makes us good as a defense uh, agency, and and what um. What makes it to where we can out com out compete our our competitors, where we can outperform our competitors, is we're really good at knowing when to arrest and when to not. See, when we arrest somebody and and it turns out it was a mistake, and we actually it, it turns out we initiated force against them, we lose money. When uh, when we don't make enough arrests, when we're too chicken shit to go in and arrest somebody because we don't want the lawsuit, we don't have any customers. So we got to find a balance between those two things. Now we're assuming a lot here. Sure, we're assuming that um, that basically that the free market will um, fill a vacuum. That if there's a demand for security. Uh, for a security service that that demand will be met that's what we're assuming we're assuming that it, that it in a vacuum that without a state monopolizing the security industry you know the 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 protection of law the the defend protect and defend uh, uh, industry whatever you however you want to name it um, that there would be a demand for this such a thing see and we're assuming that the free market actually does uh, supply uh, uh, causes supply to emerge that that meets a demand. When there's a demand for security, that a supply uh, will will appear. Okay. When there's a demand for arbitration, a supply will show up. You know, that's what we're assuming. I think those are pretty safe assumptions. 